Hi, I'm Brian Euler with Pioneer Builders. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna get into the details on a vented overroof insulated assembly, probably something you've never seen before. First time we've ever done it. I'll give you some tips and tricks. For all you Europeans, you're probably used to seeing this a lot, but in the Pacific Northwest, in the United States, probably not so much, in fact. While I'm sure this has been done in Washington State before, to my knowledge, I've never actually seen it IRL. That's for my 14-year-old son in real life. Okay, so what this is, is it's an over-vented roof assembly that's also insulated. If you come up here, I'll show you some of these layers. This is a nice little section. Rather than a section drawing, it's actually a section that we're able to see. This here is the actual roof sheathing. And that is basically going to act to be able to hold together all of the roof rafters. And that is the structural system. In this case, they're eye joist rafters from PWT. Very conventional. So this is just going into your eye joist rafters. Instead of trussing it, we're able to have a lot of open volumes architecturally. But then we're also able to have the volumes to be able to put our mechanical systems inside that conditioned space. So that's primarily what we're trying to accomplish here is to bring our uh, mechanical equipment as well as ductwork into conditioned space. So we have the structure figured out. Now there's different ways that you can have your thermal uh, plane up there at the roof line. We've done it a variety of ways. One of the least expensive ways to do it is to have an air channel that's underneath the roof sheathing and then you have your thermal insulation underneath that. It's a very safe assembly, but you are limited with how much insulation depth you can actually get in there. And then the other negative thing about that is all of those rafters are thermal bridges, which allows the heat from the inside to conduct through there to the outside. So in this case, you can see our next layer. This is three inches of Rockwell's comfort board. Notice it's not comfort bat. So we'll talk about that a little bit. By this being over the top, remember we just talked about that thermal bridging? What that's gonna do is, in our climate zone, effectively eliminate any thermal bridging that would happen through those structural members. It's comfort board instead of comfort bat. It has a high R value per inch, but it also has very high compressive strength. So you're able to have your roof sheathing and you're able to have a snow load on top or your live loads that isn't going to cause that to have any appreciable compression. I mean, you would have to get many, 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 many feet before you saw compression. And remember, just because something compresses doesn't mean it's a failure. It just means that in practical terms, every material in existence has some sort of a compressive strength to it. Okay, but... You can't really see all of the assembly quite as well right there, so let's come up here. So underneath the Rockwell comfort board is the first layer of zip sheathing. Now one thing to notice about that, and you can see it here nicely, everything is taped. That's our air barrier. So that means, well, it's self-explanatory. Everything inboard of that is going to be the interior atmosphere that you're able to condition. Within those eye joist rafters, there's comfort bat. So bat insulation like you're used to. This is going to have an R value of R51 in some total by the time you add up all of the insulation. Its effective R value is a little bit higher. And the reason for that is because of the thermal bridging. Okay, so what about the venting side of things? That's where the two by fours come into play. These are screwed down with Simpson fasteners. Let me talk to you a little bit about the screw that my brother decided to use. This is the Simpson SWD screw. This is gonna go through the two by four. It's gonna go through the insulation. It's gonna go through the sheathing and go into the top cord of the PWT eye joist rafter. So it easily will drill through all of that, but this reverse threading here allows it to not over clamp and having a smaller head does sort of the same thing. We wanted to make sure that the roof plane, that the roof cladding is gonna go on, doesn't have waves to it. If this was the big head, it could easily really just pull that thing through. So this allows us to control the depth of the pull. So we've got our two by four on top of this. 
It looks sort of like a rain screen if you've seen that before, but this isn't really a rain screen. On top of the zip is where you specify your roof cladding and that's what handles the rain. It's really your asphalt shingle. This is more to make sure that you don't have any water vapor that could eventually start to collect. And eventually if that collects enough, you're gonna have issues as far as mold and rot and those types of things. That's why you have roof venting to begin with. So why would we do this over other assemblies? We are getting a massively high R value. Uh, Zero Energy Ready Home was just rebranded. I still have to retrain my brain to think of what the new term is. We're able to keep all of the ductwork in conditioned space like we talked about. That'll give us a $5,000 tax credit. It also allows us to be foam free, which is what I like. So if there's any type of a roof leak, which could happen at some point, we're gonna be aware of it pretty quick. That's always a concern with spray foam is what happens if you have a roof leak and it is concealed for a long period of time. That can be a big problem. Thank you so much for watching. I think this is an absolutely incredible assembly. It's the coolest one we've ever done, but more than just being cool, I actually think it's the best and it's the most rooted in effective science. Thanks to my brother who's done the execution as well as Jordan and Kyle. These guys have done an amazing job. And thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Uh, I find that sometimes people that ask the questions I've never thought about, and that will only make me a better builder and improve the quality of this channel. Thank you so much for watching. Now go build something.